Hello, uh, welcome to the third tutorial of Weka Machine Learning and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can, how you can use Weka uh, to classify instances. So, so far we have used the pre-process tab of Weka Explorer and we have explored some of its, some of its aspects. But in order to classify we have to move on to the second tab of Weka Explorer uh, that's called classify and we are going to use that tab for this tutorial. So, in this tutorial, we again loaded the def default uh, R file that's provided in the Weka installation package, that's weather.r file, and we are going to see how we can uh, classify the instances of Weka, uh, instances of this particular file by using the fifth feature called play. There are some other nominal and numeric attributes in this file called outlook, temperature, humidity, and windy, and just to recap, uh, uh, we have to uh, say whether or not we uh, we are uh, we are able to play outside uh, on the basis of these particular features uh, for the training instances. So in order to classify, you can choose classify tab, and you can have uh, you can choose uh, many classifiers, and these classifiers are actually grouped into several classifiers. For example, base functions, lazy, meta. MI miscellaneous rules and trees because you know that there are there are numbers of classifying uh, classification algorithms are there and uh, they can be categorized or grouped like just like this for example you can use base uh, naive base uh, and in order to find naive, naive base you can you can click on uh, the base here and you can use uh, also you can use trees decision trees and in order to do that you have to click on trees and you can find the 48 48 graft and so many so many uh, decision tree uh, classifiers so which classifier classification algorithm to use uh, that's a different question you have to get back to the old school book and of machine learning and see uh, which particular algorithm works better for uh, your particular task I'm not going to talk about uh, that at least for this tutorial I'm just showing you how to use the classifiers. So, in order to uh, classify the train the instances in our training training set, we are going to use a naive base. Of course, we could have used some other algorithms here as well, but we are just sticking with naive base. And you can you you, you must know that the learning algorithms they have their own parameters, and you can set those parameters manually here. You can overwrite them. The defaults are just defaults here. For example, in order to change the parameters of naive base, you can click here, and you can see that there are several options, and these options vary from classifier to classifier in Weka. And if you want to see what these classifiers can do and what they cannot do, you can you can always click these two buttons. First one is more. This gives a synopsis and also some of other informations like what options you can use and what are the options um, meaning. And you can always have this information from more tab. And if you want to uh, see what classes or what attributes you can use with this particular classifier classifying algorithm, you can always click on the capabilities and you can see that you can use nominal attributes, missing values, empty nominal attributes, and so on. This is particularly helpful because some of the algorithms they cannot deal with missing values so you can have that information whether or not uh, your classifying algorithm can uh, handle missing values uh, by clicking on that capabilities button. And you can of course change some of these values as well so you can make them true or false or you can, make, you can set the threshold values even for some uh, particular uh, classifying algorithms and if you want to use uh, the, your default say your own settings uh, in future you don't have to change you, you are not actually eager to change that over the period of the time uh, period of time and in, in, in that case you can save your own settings here you can save it anywhere on your hard disk and if you want to use that again in future then you can just you can just uh, select that uh, save file save config configuration so we're just clicking OK because we're just eager to use the default settings of Nightbase for Wake Up. 
and there are four test options the first one is training set this means that you have your training instances and you're going to uh, make the classifier on the basis of these training instances and you are using that training set again for the testing purpose okay and the second one is supply test set this means that with your training set you're just developing a model or a classifier and you save that and then you want to apply that model that particular model you just saved on a particular supply test set and the third one is cross validation this is the standard one and in this case you can you can choose false uh, if you want to say uh, for example I want five folds then you can select five if you want to set it to 30 you can also set it to 30 but we are just uh, eager to set it to default 10 and that's the standard measure as well you always have the option of percentage split that means how much of your data set of this for example weather.r how much of it you want to be used as training set and how much of it is going to be used as test set so 66% split that means 66% of the instances will be used as training as training data and the rest of the 34% uh, will be used as test data you can have always have the more options button and you can click and you can see some of uh, some of the items here that I'm not going to talk particularly for this tutorial because it will take some time you always have the options to select on uh, select the feature on the basis of who, uh, on the, on the uh, you can select the feature uh, that actually will work as your classifying feature and you can see that we have some nominal and numeric attributes but we're going to classify the instances on the basis of nominal attribute called play and now is if everything is set here you just click on start and you can see okay that we, we can we use percentage split here right 66 percent training and 34 uh, percent uh, testing but that's not what we want to do so by chance accidentally you have started it so in order to delete that you just select it and delete result buffer so we want a standard cross validation here so we select that checkbox and we select that radio button and we uh, press start so you can see that on the output pane we have several information first one is scheme weka.classifiers base classifier we have used knife base the relation name is weather and if you recall that this weather is actually the first element that was entered in the weather.r file uh, that means the name of the relation there are 14 instances and the five attributes including the classifying attributes play and we have tested it on the basis of tenfold cross validation and this is the classifier model on full training set and there are some several information like this this is the attribute yes class has 0.63 value of outlook and no has 0.38 that means 63 percent of the instances follow this and 38% of the instances followed this so it made uh, those figures uh, in this way so the outlook is called sunny and three of the instances were yes and four of them were no uh, so th these were the values actually and temperature uh, that you can always uh, see that the mean standard deviation weighted sum and the precision it gives you everything for uh, for every feature so in the end you can see that this is a vital information correctly classified instances 9 and in correctly classified instances 5 so I can see I can see that okay uh, well this is not a good not a bad classification by naive based on this particular data set because 64% uh, were them were uh, of them were uh, correct and 35% were incorrect you can always take a look at the mean absolute error or root mean squared error or relative absolute error or root relative squared error it depends on your task so these errors are very helpful for you when you're going to calculate the overfitting problem of your training model or learning model so we have 0.4649 mean absolute error for this particular classification task and uh, 
we ca you can also see that true positive rate and false positive rate these are the uh, measurements that are used to plot a, an ROC graph rock curve and I'm going to talk about rock curve uh, in a minute you can also see that precision recall if measure and also the rock area that means area under rock curve a you can you can have every information you need every information you need from a classification test and this means that the yes class has precision 66 percent and recall 88 percent i can say it's a reasonably very good performance by the night base for this particular test and the F measure is 76 while the no class has a precision 50 percent but its recall is very low 20 percent and that makes uh, the F measure drops down to 28.6 percent and this is the weighted average 60.7 precision 64 recall and 59 F score we have the confusion matrix here as well this this confusion matrix means that a is yes and b is no so we had nine positive instances in our training example out of which the classification model has correctly identified eight as positive but incorrectly identified one as negative but it was actually a positive so this one is true positive for yes class eight and this one is actually false negative it was belong to, it belongs to a class but it was classified as b so that's a false negative so this is one and b equals to no this means that there are five instances that were negative and this classifier has identified four as a but they were actually they're actually they belong to they be actually belong to class b so uh this one is actually true positive for from the perspective of class b and this is false positive from the perspective of class b this is false negative uh, from the perspective of uh, class b and eight is the true negative uh, from the perspective of class b on the other hand for yes class we have true positive eight false positive four false negative one and true negative one so in this way you can also calculate the accuracy of your classifier uh, the model you have just built now if you want to save this model then you can always right click on it and save and click on save model to save this particular model and you can always choose load model to load this particular model and apply that to some test set or cross validation or whatsoever so that's it for this uh this week's tutorial i'm going to i'm, I'm in, in next tutorials i don't know where it uh comes within a week or so is going to be in tutorial four or five i'm not i cannot answer you i cannot guarantee that guarantee i cannot guarantee that because uh well i have some plans i have some other plans you know so in order to uh explain some of these very very important aspects of weka like visualize margin curve or visualize threshold curve cost benefit analysis visualize cost curve well i have to take some time and i have to prepare myself to explain them to you in some future tutorials but i'm going to back to you with some more for example it's a very different one if you have an imbalanced data set, uh, for example, if you have training sets, uh, you, if your training sets consists only five positive examples but one thousand negative examples, in that case, you can have you can exp have some experience of overfitting, and in order to in order to remove that, you have to use some algorithms to increase your positive instances synthetically. So I'm going to show you that in my next tutorial stay tuned uh, don't be upset because I'm so late in making tutorials because I'm doing my PhD and I have to figure out some times from my current research and I have to make this tutorial this is not a commercial one uh, just for personal interest so stay tuned guys I'm promising that I'll be back uh, very soon thank you very much